much, Maya. Um, before you go, any questions? Somebody wants to participate to contribute his ideas, something? Um, On my presentation, there is my email, so anyone who wants to Can you show me to my to Yeah, yeah. Um, will it take time to organize or what? A minute. Okay, so what, um, before we are moving to the next uh, lecture, or do you want to do it afterwards? So you. As you wish. No, no, so you get ready. Okay, so we'll move to the next, um, and, and it's very uh, connected because our next lecture um, is regarding those young, uh, talented uh, students that I was talking earlier. And we have here with us uh, Shira Shofti, which is the head of the uh, science-oriented youth. Uh, you know, those wonderful uh, initiative of Tel Aviv University, uh, nurturing the very young uh, students and bringing them, uh, you know, choosing them and bringing them and educated, educating them uh, in their very early age. And we have just one very nice um, outcome, I would say, of this uh, project. He graduated uh, the, this uh, um, program and is now a scientist by himself, independent scientist, and I want to invite here Or Sagi, please. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks. Uh, my talk is going to be somewhat different from the talks you heard earlier and you're going to hear on today because I'm not going to give you facts and figures. I've been asked to talk a bit from my experience as someone who, as Sheila says, is science oriented. Now, I've been asked to talk about the challenges of it and as um, is said in something called the sunscreen song by Mary Schmick, as um, if she were asked to give one piece of advice, it would be to wear sunscreen. Because wearing sunscreen is something that's been scientifically proven to do something. Whereas what I'm going to tell you now is only from my experience. So let's start with this forward. Now, Mark Twain once said that he's not going to let his schooling interfere with his education. Uh, I asked one of my friends yesterday, and he said that uh, for somewhat he found school as kind of a sensory deprivation chamber because he didn't get the stimulation he needed. And I think that for science-oriented or excelling youth, sometimes the challenge is to kind of find a balance between on the one hand knowing your potential and on the other hand knowing your limits, knowing that you can do amazing things but you can't do everything. And sometimes at school we don't get the stimulation that allows us to see both edges of this so either you think that you can do everything because you succeed at what you do at school, or on the other hand, you may find that, okay, you can do that, and that's about it. And I think this is tackled in four different methods, which are, on the one hand, enabling youth to do academic studies. For example, I studied here at Tel Aviv University. Another option is doing original research. A third is competitions. And a fourth is a more amorphous thing of being able to make something out of nothing. And I think something that goes with all of them is the important opportunity to meet people similar-minded. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about a few programs that allow these five different aspects and then to dwell specifically on one of them. So let's dive in. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the Science Olympiads. Unlike the Olympics you hear about once every four years, this happens every year, nationally and internationally. And instead of checking how fast you can run and throw hammers and stuff like that, it checks how good you are at biology, chemistry, physics, etc. And what this allows is on the one hand to get to meet academic level material 
in your interest subjects, and on the other hand, to kind of calibrate yourself against other like-minded youth. Another type of initiative is initiatives that allow doing original research. For example, the program for super gifted youth that we have here in Israel, or a new program called Alpha that just opened this year. Uh, by the way, all the programs I'm talking about, again, are from my experience um, of being in them. And what this allows is having a mentor which you work with for, say, a year. So you can have a role model to see the amazing stuff that you can do. You do original research that no one's done before. And with that, to kind of get to meet failure, where you try to do something and you don't succeed, which is an experience that I think is important for knowing and building your character. Besides that, uh, this original research can participate in competitions. For example, Intel ISAF, which has the local version here at the Science Museum, led by Maya, who told you a minute ago. And what this allows is on um, first of all, meeting other like-minded youngsters who also did amazing research and finding out interesting stuff you can do and also that you may not be the best in your subject field, which is something you sometimes don't get to try in your small area. A totally different approach is that by FIRST, which is an organization that conducts robotics competitions worldwide, both for high school, they have the FRC, where you get to build a robot in six weeks from, totally from scratch. The FLL for middle schoolers, which also includes doing research in something. For example, my team tried to solve a problem of traffic jams. And there's also the junior FLL starting from elementary graders, so second and third grade and so on. And what these allow is kind of this aspect of making something from nothing. Getting to see that with your own creativity, you can build something that no one's done before. And with that, there's also the important experience of failure and not getting to do what you want and things not working out like you want. And also, there's an important aspect of passing the knowledge on, of people from the FRC, for example, working with junior FLLers and getting to calibrate your knowledge by giving it on to others. And before I get to the program I'd like to dwell on a little more, I'd also like to tell you about a cool initiative called The Big Geek which was organized by an Israeli organization called Startup Seeds. And the name is based off the TV program The Big Brother, because The Big Geek included this. They took 16 youngsters who were interested in computer science, divided us into four groups, and locked us in a building for 24 hours with everything live, live streamed outside so anyone could see it live. And by the way, they gave us every temptation we could not to work. They put mounds of candy outside and Xboxes with connects. And we got the fun but pretty challenging task of building an interesting website that did something cool within 24 hours. And that's the only time we had. So for example, my team did something we called vocal debate. I'm a big fan of debate myself. And we made an online platform to uh, record what you want to say regarding any type of debate and kind of debate it on instead of using lots of exclamation, exclamation marks to kind of shout it out. And another team, for example, did something that allowed you to pick a Facebook album and a YouTube song and it automatically made a slideshow, which is something I found very useful the month, months afterwards. And this also included the element of collaboration, which is sometimes missing in the usual school experience, and specifically collaboration with like-minded individuals. So we both, or the whole group, has the same goal and we're all striving towards it together. And last but not least, I'd like to tell you a bit little more about a program called the Future Scientists and Inventors Program, which was initiated by the president of Israel, Shimon Peres, and is partially funded by Sami Segol, who I saw here in the audience. And I think this program combines all five aspects I mentioned earlier. First of all, it allows academic studies at Tel Aviv University, for example. Now we have it at five universities throughout the country. It also allows doing research. There's also so the social aspect, a little competitive aspect, and last but not least, the option to build something out of nothing. And what do I mean? So first of all, the program starts with the option to study at an academic level, first of all with peers your age, and later with students who are five plus years older than you. So for example, my first academic level physics was done here, and it kind of 
opened me up to stuff that I hadn't heard of till then, and on the other hand, allowed me to experience failure, which I didn't meet at school, which I think it was important to calibrate myself. Another thing is that after a year in the program, you get to start doing original research. I have two younger sisters who, one of them is already in the program for two years, and the other is going to join this summer. And one of them, for example, is going to start doing research on the biology of bacteria in ants. I have friends who did research on superconductors. I myself did research here uh, at Tel Aviv University in the neurobiology department, and I'm still doing it. And I think this allows you to kind of take your creativity and use that spark for something that the world has never seen before. And with that, to kind of find that you can do everything. For example, in research I did on magnetic bacteria, I went to five different beaches and tried to find magnetic bacteria in each of them, and that really didn't work out. Now, I did that at the Weizmann Institute under Dr. Rotem Sulek, and we said, okay, maybe this didn't work out, let's try something different. So we made a theoretical concept about magnetic bacteria without even seeing them. Another thing which I find important is the social aspect of meeting youth that are also interested in similar stuff, also hardworking, and we also did regular youth stuff, as you would maybe think of it. Here's us playing soccer just outside here. And the option to collaborate with them and work on projects together, which also brings me to the mini competitive aspect. For example, we had something called a white night, where we stayed here at the university for 24 hours. It's pretty interesting to be here after dark. And we had to think of the best way to knock an asteroid off its course. For example, my team decided to do it with coloring the asteroid and using sun rays to knock it off its course. And I think this is a good type of a little competition that motivates and stimulates creativity. And last but not least, a connection with the industry and academia that allows the opportunity to give something to the world. For example, the Future Scientists and Inventors program connected we with an organization called Space IL, which is an Israeli nonprofit attempting to send a spaceship to the moon next year. And they even allowed me the pretty challenging task of trying to find possible landing times for the spaceship. And I think it's a pretty empowering experience to do something like that, which I would have never have thought I'd do any time, let alone at age 17. And on the other hand, it allowed me to kind of get to experience real-world challenges. So I think specifically this program combines all five aspects I talked about earlier. And I tried to tell you about, first of all, the challenge of science-oriented youth and five different aspects of tackling it, be, the, be it academic studies, research, competitions, or making something out of nothing, combined with a social aspect, and tried to touch on a few programs that I think embody these. Thank you. I just, first of all, if somebody has any questions to all, hear them. I uh, just, uh, I'll introduce you first. Uh, this is uh, Professor Karl Heinz Meyer, the vice director of the Young Project. <laughs> and the question I have, are you sure this balance, which, which I like? said one of the purpose of your work is to find your limits. Did you see any limits? Did you find any, any limits? Of <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I'm still working on calibrating it. Um, yes, but I did find, I found it kind of empowering. Of course, it was pretty frustrating when I tried something and it didn't work. And when you fail at doing a small task at the university, which you didn't get at school, but I think I'm still pretty much calibrating it, and hopefully in the years to come, I'll get to see my limits more. And I think it's important to start it at a young age. Thank you. Another question? Yes. One very simple, maybe naive question. <laughs> what is the best time to land on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great question. Actually, I signed um, a non-disclosure agreement regarding that. But <laughs> just... Um, I'll tell you that we're trying to combine aspects from 
um, when it would be interesting to see a live stream of the landing, to when the moon's rising and falling and stuff like that. But I think that's about it, about what I can say. <laughs> yes? What's the best way to get you interested in the brain? <laughs> Ooh, that's a great question. Well, first of all, as I said, I'm doing research here at the Neurobiology Department, so I am myself am pretty interested in it. And I think the main important thing is the fact that the brain is really at the frontier of research now. Unlike some subjects where uh, I feel that I need to do a lot of academic studies to get to the edge of our knowledge now and to get to do something revolutionary by even a tiny bit, I think in the brain we have vast areas that are yet unexplored, which allow me to do a tiny thing now without doing a whole degree. And I think that the important aspect is the feeling that there's still a lot to contribute in the field of the brain. And that's why it's important to tell youth about it and so on. Because I think it really is one of the main research areas of the future. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> yes. Hmm. I'd be glad to tell you later about specific ones, but I think all of these, whichever you found interesting, and I'm, for example, I'm very grateful to my school that they allowed me to get to all of these things. And I think the main thing is there is a known quote by Thomas Edison that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So the first thing is to make sure that you're willing to work hard and to also try to find things for yourself. How I got to some of these things is just saying, hmm, I'm bored, let's find something interesting to do and just Google searching it. So find out what you like and Google search it. Thanks. Thank you very much.